All right, so you want a rhino and warlords. I'm going to show you how. The first thing you're going to notice, it's going to be a little bit different than running it in any other game mode. Because in Warlords, it'd be a little more fair. They nerfed it. They removed some of the features because it's a very overpowered machine. It is not a tank. It is artillery. But what they do uh, leave you is still pretty strong. Another thing you're going to notice, it's a bit spendy running this little setup. It's 100 for the single infantry you're going to need. 7,000 for the Rhino, of course. Accessing the arsenal is going to be 1,000 for the gear you're going to need. And then 3,000 for the ammo helmet, plus the 25 for the drop query. I'm going to show you how to stack all that into one. So it saves you a little bit of money there. Okay, so basically you're going to be running your own AR2 daughter. Uh, the reason why, I don't know if it's a glitch or if it's just another way that they nerfed it to make a little less OP, because it's still very OP. Um, if you are tracking someone else's laser, if you lock on someone else's laser and you fire multiple rounds, and they move that laser a decent distance, your rounds will keep hitting in the spot that you originally locked onto. You'll have to unlock from their laser and then relock onto it. And then I'm not even sure if the rounds that are in the air will retract to the new lock. I'm pretty sure that you got to send all new rounds for that new target. And then if the target that they're tracking for you moves, which a lot of them do, because if you hit that first ATGM right next to them, <laughs> and don't kill them, they're going to be running. So uh, you're going to need multiple rounds and they start doing their little shimmies. Uh, you're not going to kill them. You're going to have to unlock and relock constantly. And it's just, it's not worth it. Um, so, Running your own laser through an AR2 darter is the best way. You can send multiple rounds in the air, switch over to it, and then track each one in, chasing down little people and jeeps and little fun stuff like, you know, killing ants with a magnifying glass. It's it's fun. Anyways, oh, it's a, it's a blast. And totally mean. But it's Arma. All right, now that we got the money out of the way, because that does take a while... And it does take a good circumstance uh, to be helpful. You don't want the enemy to have high air dominance. You won't last very long. And you don't want them to be too far on your side of the map because they're making more CP than you at that point. If someone talks your team into back capping um, and they get onto your side of the map, that means that you're losing points while they're gaining points with every flag both teams take. So yeah um don't try this if they get onto your side of the map it's not gonna help you'll just waste money and you're just gonna make less and less money while you keep trying it so you want a situation where they are on here or over if we can catch them right in here and start to push them up there's almost no way they can win because they are making no money at all by this point we are making enough money that it's it's hilarious. You just got to get enough people to keep fighting because once you start making a good amount of money, they start like, hey, let's start these weird little ass operations. Ooh, let's run submarine up there and pick on them up at the air base, or uh, you know, or uh, let's get a squad of choppers and just kamikaze over and over again, and it just it's it's a waste. Because while you're sitting there arguing about what you're gonna do and yabbering on back and forth, they're taking flags. How you win this game is to take flags. So, this is a perfect situation. You want to be a decent distance away. You want to be able to lob enough rounds. The max distance on the Rhino is 8 kilometers. You're going to pick something within that with enough room to where when your team does beat this area and starts to push on, that you can slightly cover that area too. Or, that while you're doing that and you're you're dropping any defensive units or tanks that the op four that can drop, they'll start uh, dropping them up more north and then bringing them down. If you have enough view range and enough hit range, you can prevent that as well. If you do your job right, they're not spawning vehicles and people no more. Okay, so picking a good location. 
So you want a decent distance, but still far enough where you can get enough round. So the round here, you kind of want to stick right around in here. These are kind of good spots. Um, if by chance your team takes Etheria, that's a good little spot to cover all of these areas. But in a pinch, Neocori. Neocori is really good. It's got a couple of little spots. Okay, so what you are looking for, if you want to make this a little bit simpler, just go up here where it says toggle map textures. Go ahead and click that. That changes the background. And you're looking for buildings that are this rectangle shape and that's kind of got a little fence around them with little outbuildings. Uh, these will give you a hint that they're possibly warehouses. Like right here. Maybe right there. These are the ones, maybe this one right here. Okay, these are the buildings that we are going to be wanting. Okay, the next thing you want to be looking for is direction. All right, see, uh, normally these buildings have uh, two doors in them. Like if this is right here, they'll have like a door right here. And the other door, it'll be in this corner right here. And you'll be looking for the direction that you want to fire in. So if the targets that you're aiming for are in this direction, you want to make sure that your building is kind of facing in that direction. The radar on the bottom corner of the screen when you're inside of the Rhino looks furthest in the direction that you're facing. So that's kind of why you want to do that. So this one's a good one, but I think we're going to look at this one. So, okay, so let's mark it. Go ahead and hold left shift and then left click. That'll put a little marker that only you can see on there. And it also can range. It can do all the little stuff. So let's turn that back off. We don't need that no more. Okay, now let's jump over there. Fast travel to see sectors. Okay, instead of running all around, well, I'm right next to it, but instead of running all around trying to find them because uh, not all of them will be warehouses, um, there's a lot of rectangle shaped buildings, especially in some of the towns that won't have warehouses at all. But to make it easier, just go ahead, as soon as you get a town that has a couple of potentials that you can't see, go ahead and go to Gear, Arsenal, Request. Okay, go ahead and go to Backpacks. Go all the way down, and what you're looking for is right here, UAV Bag, AR2, NATO. That's what we are. Go ahead and click that. Go ahead and go to Terminal, and we also want the UAV NATO Terminal. Once you got those selected, go ahead and close that, and let's assemble our darter. Now, like everything in Arma, you want to scroll wheel when you look at anything to access its options. Uh, you would normally, or every other tutorial would say to connect to it this way, but not this time because there's one little thing that kind of gets you caught. We want to turn that off. So go up to Open UAV Terminal. Go ahead and scroll into where you are at and right click right near you and then connect to it this way. These will give you these options right over here. Definitely want to turn off autonomous because that's not really working. That's got a lot of glitches. If you try to send it somewhere, it'll start doing these weird loops sometimes, especially if you get a lot of them in the air. There's, there's a lot of bugs with that. And here's the one that gets you shot down the most. You don't want any lights. That's just, you're just a big, huge blinking flare in the sky saying, Hey, shoot me down. So as soon as you got those, if you click either one of these, you're going to be accessing that part. So we want the driver control. It'll default to this weird outside of you. So um, if you right click, just single right click, takes you right into here. Then hit X to put you in hover mode. Now this is key for most any kind of drones or whatnot that's on the ground. You want to put it into hover mode before you take off because if the ground that you're on is at a slant and you go to take off, it's easy to smack into a building right next to you and if you're trying to control it. So if you put in an auto hover, the second this thing leaves the ground, it's going to leave the ground sideways a little bit. But the second it does, it'll straighten out, level out, and stop moving. That's what you want. So go ahead and hold shift. It'll key it up. And then lift it up. 
Okay, I have my audio turned off so all the game sounds don't bug us while we're talking about this, but you'll hear it all wind up and everything like that. All right, let's get it up a little bit so we can see the town. Remember, we were looking at our potentials. Let's get up to a little bit of a decent height. Okay, that's about good enough. I'll let off shift and not scroll down to take UAV tort control. Hit the space bar, which is which is Arma's way of saying enter. Okay, so that was one of the potentials, and it is a warehouse. There's that other one that I kind of like because it does shoot in that direction. And this one we marked. There's one right there. Huh, this town doesn't have fake warehouse. I think that one kind of shows up as a fake warehouse. But anyways, they're not everywhere, but they are kind of everywhere. Not in every town, but you'll find them there. Uh, one right there, you know, they're just kind of scattered all about. Now here's the other thing about picking the right warehouse scroll down let's release UAV control let's take a look here go back into our map okay so as you can see these have the little fat green square around them these have the fat red square it means you can't cap them yet until they are targeted right well you cannot do sector scans in those not until you've actually captured them same for op4 can't do to us if you're in a town that they have not captured it, for them, if it has a blue square around it, they cannot do a sector scan. You are completely safe in there as far as they can't just poof, oh, hey, he's right there and mark it for some jet to come and get you. So try to pick a town like that. Uh, basically see how far they've gotten. I don't know how far they've gotten. If they've gotten to Anthrakia, which it shows that they have, um, then I don't know. So I'm just kind of taking a chance here. But uh, that's the, uh, the problem with setting up your Rhino within the cap square, is they can be able to see you on a sector scan, even though they don't own the flag. Um, sometimes it's best to pick one right on the outskirts, just in case. But the downside of that is when your darter gets shot out of the sky, because it's going to happen quite frequently, sometimes I don't know how it gets shot down. But anyways, when it does... You'll have to get out of your Rhino, run all the way back in the cap square to access your arsenal to get another backpack. Or you do the safe way. Before you get your Rhino and you head out to there when you've got you know your drone set up, your everything all set up, and you're you're taking your last vehicle out there to to position, you access your arsenal one more time, grab one more backpack and leave it on you while you drive it out there. So if your drone ever does get shot down, all you gotta do is get out of the side of the building place your drone, and then fly it back to your location and get back in. Now, if it ever gets shot down, you will have to run back to access the arsenal again if you can't beg someone someone further up here to, hey, can you access the arsenal for me and put down a drone for me? Because you can access any drone that anybody plops down for you as long as they don't connect to it. Um, it does shave off a whole lot of time of having to drive the drone all the way there but um, the other downside is if they are anywhere near the battlefield when you go to fly the drone up you are extremely vulnerable getting to altitude really close to that many AIs that will like to take pop shots at it so you always want to come back from a distance before you approach okay so and now we just need to get our equipment so first thing you want to do access your I menu go over to your infantry and we're just going to need a basic crewman just hit request and you'll see it right here now don't do anything yet you know this is your query we're going to add to it this will be the 25 that we're going to be saving by by dropping them all together so do that and then we want to go to our vehicle and we go to the ammo Hammett. request that as well and always do own sectors. It's the cheapest, and you're right here anyways, you know. So, click that. Click the flag of the town you're on. And it'll see where it's going at. Okay. 
As soon as you approach, hit your shift key to unlock it. Go ahead and get in it first. Then Sector scan terminated. either hit your F2 key or the little squiggly key above your tab next to your one. Uh, the difference is the little squiggly key will access all of your AI um, as opposed to individually selecting. But since we only got one, it's just easier to hit that one little squiggly key. And then make sure that we are not looking at any other kind of vehicle and say get in. Because we're looking at the other vehicle, we're telling them to get in that vehicle. We don't want them in that vehicle, we want them in our vehicle. And you better hustle. Okay. I got patience issues. Shush. Okay. As soon as you get in here, now this is, you. it's a mad dash. Because if there are jets running around, they are looking for that little parachute. Well, not little parachute, but they're looking for the parachute of vehicles dropping behind the lines. Because... The rhino in this game is very infamous, and they look to kill us. Get over here, open up the doors. All right, now I was telling you about the direction, you know, that these uh, face in multiple directions, uh, and the direction that uh, you're firing is key. You can use either door to fire out, and how you load this is a little bit different depending on how you want to fire it. So, say... Um, if you want to do fire it out this door, you want to load the ammo in right along here, which is where I'm going to be doing. You park it like right along here and nose it all the way up to the wall as close as you can and over here. And then the rhino will be right here, not too close to the door, but not too close to the helmet either. I'll explain why a little bit later. Um, but if you want to fire out that door, you want to load the rhino first. Pull the rhino in, get it right here in the Hemet spot where it's kind of looking out the door. Go ahead and pop out the door so you can see a good little angle. And then the ammo Hemet gets pulled in right up here and it barely clears the door. When you shut the door, you're shutting the door on its butt. But for this case, we're going to be shooting out these doors so the ammo goes in first. Now the ammo ain't too bad. We got a little bit of room to maneuver here, so you ain't got to be too careful. But you don't want to hit the walls too much because the truck will blow up, the building will blow up, you will blow up. Not good. Okay, let's get in here, nudge up, and that's good. Go ahead and get out. Make sure you get out and not eject because it'll leave the engine running. And then as soon as you're out, always scroll down and lock it. Stop your AI from doing funny stuff if you try to tell it to do it. Because when you lock the vehicle, you lock your AI in the position. And the vehicle in position, apparently, too, as far as the AI is concerned. A locked vehicle will not travel. It's Arma. You don't know what could happen. So, lock it. Stops other people from coming and playing with your vehicles. As they like to do that. There's always A-holes in this game. So, that is the anti-A-hole lock right there. So, next thing. Make sure that you don't scan. hear no jets. Incoming sector scan. Check your map. Make sure no one else sees no jets. We're kind of good. Okay, now let's get the Rhino down. Go back to vehicle. And now you're going to want the regular MGS. The up has the commander gun. But also, it doesn't show in the picture, but it has a bunch of extra armor and grill and all kinds of stuff that's on the sides of the vehicle in the front and everything like that. But it makes it too wide to fit through the doorways. Scan terminated. Uh, we only need the MGS. Uh, it doesn't have any... This one doesn't have any extra features that we could use anyway, so we're good here. We request it. Drop it here. Select drop zone. Airdrop in progress. And now let's go... Well, we ain't got to go get it too far. We're fortunate this game. Normally it drops it way far away. Of course, they did do an update recently. I'm not exactly sure of everything that they did patch in the update. I do know they did break a few things. You cannot transfer CP. If you do, you're sending your money to Limbo. So don't do that. Anyways, this is why you got to watch out for jets. Look at that. That's a big, huge target. I mean... I would shoot that down. I'm so tempted. Where's my rocket? I want to... No, I ain't going to shoot that down. You know how expensive that is? I just got to 
make sure no one else is going to shoot it down. That is a... Come on. Hang on. Are you not coming down? My rhino stuck. Okay. Select drop zone. Airdrop in progress. Okay, that one's coming. One hundred meters. Right. Incoming. Oh no. My drone just got shut down. I I know what it was. That landed on my drone. Wow. That just landed on my drone and it caused all of that. Incoming sector. Well, thank God I got a little extra money. I saved up for this. All right. But since we don't need them both and I don't want them cluttering up, giving my position away. Go ahead, look at it, scroll down, and remove selected unit. Do not need that one. Let's get over here. Okay, unlock, drive a vehicle, and we are backing in. It's a little bit tricky because this thing barely fits. And looking behind is not perfect either. that a little bit okay straight back it's a little bit tricky Incoming sector okay so now the reason you don't want to go back too far it's tempting because this thing shoots a big huge flash out of smoke and everything and it goes right out that door so you want to back up or you think you want to back up and uh, here's the problem with that so let's uh Switch to our gunner spot. Let's turn our engine off first. Go to our gunner spot. Lock it. Okay, well, we're not having a rhino. Normally, when we are too close to the other vehicle, the bottom option is dismiss selected unit, which we don't want to do because that'll just vaporize our ammo truck. Every time they're switching between our rhino and our dart are really quick. So, uh, find a little sweet spot to where you can look around, kind of, and you don't get that option at the bottom. So, as soon as you do, there you go. Go ahead and uh, get out really quick. And let's shut one of these doors. We don't need them both open. That's another little sign if someone comes flying by and they see some doors open. Okay, we're also going to need another darter of gear, arsenal. Give me another backpack since I rhinoed my darter. Sector scan terminated. AR2. Okay. Assemble. Remember, open the terminal. Do not connect to it directly. Right click. Turn all this off. Now go into it. Release control. Let's get out of here. Okay, so pick kind of a door in the direction that your rounds aren't going to really hit anything. Of course, in this case, we ain't got no problems. But if there's a building close up on this side and your rounds got to squeeze through this corner, go ahead and shut that door and vice versa. Now, there's a chance that this building can be at a slight angle and you got enough clearance that you can actually shoot through the little door, but there's only a couple of warehouses on the map that you can actually pull that off. So Okay, we will shut this one because it adds a lot of white to the building. It looks like a whole building Incoming from out there. Scan. All right, now let's get in here. Scroll down and go for the gunner spot. Make sure you're in the gunner spot. Go ahead and right click again to get into the actual view. Uh, okay, first thing you want to scroll down and go to your ATGM LGs. Those are your laser guided ones. That's our artillery. And then make sure you tap the F key. You'll see in the top right corner, underneath the Canon 120 millimeter, if you tap your F key, the little triangle will appear there. That'll mean that you're in top-down mode. Any rounds that you hit will strike the top of any vehicle, which is 
usually the weak spot, but in this case it'll help us clear any buildings or terrain that's in the way. Normally if you don't, it'll just try to punch through any ground or anything in a straight shot straight to the target, but in top-down mode it will try to maintain a minimum distance from the ground and it'll go straight to that altitude as fast as it can. So, okay. So we're all set up here. Now, let's get our drone in position. Scroll down, make sure that you lock the vehicle. Don't want no one getting here and playing with it. And you want to take UAV controls. Okay, our auto hover is already on, so let's hold shift and get it up off the ground. All right, and then get back over to our map and let's pick our spot. So we want to hit all around here, but we don't want to be too close because they will see us. So let's stay over in the water here. Let's uh, again shift and left click in the water and put a little marker out here. And if we're here, we should have a good line of sight of these three little towns plus defending. So, okay. Go back to shift. And let's nose down to about 15 and start heading in that direction. Now, if you stay over a thousand, I most things can't hit you at least most ground targets can't hit you especially from a angle um, only helicopters or jets or cheaters can really shoot you at the sky uh, but I like to keep it at its max height is about 1200 meters maybe a little bit higher if you can do it just right and sorry if my voice cuts in and out here and there um, we've just been getting a lot of rain lately and it's uh, messing up my sinuses because I work outside a lot well, we don't have to go far, so that's good. Normally, you're you're running this pretty far. Now, the downside is they're close. You can't get that many rounds into the air. Uh, two, maybe three, before you got to jump right back over and start guiding them in. And uh, close enough to where they might start to hear you. Um, the Rhino is a big gun, and it makes a big sound be heard from a couple of towns away so that's another thing you want to be wary about because once you start killing lots of them they know rhinos on the field and they start to look for you in multiple ways they'll send their own drones after you to start scouring towns and stuff like that to see if they see buildings uh, with smoke coming out of them or doors open or something like that or I believe that they can hear through the darter as well but um, yeah, they're listening for that. Uh, someone will sneak around on a quad bike and start hunting you down in the back downs or something like that, or they'll do a boat or something like that. But they are coming for you the second you start firing. So that's why you got to be quiet and wary. We're there and about up to altitude. Right, we can see a good amount of towns around us. So let's go ahead and tap X, put us in a hover mode. And let's gain that last bit of altitude that we can squeeze out of this thing. Okay. So let's go into torque controls. And then tap N to go into your night vision. Day or night. This is about the best way of seeing targets that you need to hit. Um, mostly armor is going to be your targets and static weapons. And how you find those is either, of course, through seeing the heat coming down as they drive through the map, or sector scans. Those are how you find your static targets. So we are going to do that. Select sector. So a sector scan Incoming here. Sector scan. Let's see if we have any static targets. And we do, or we did. Let's see what's going on. Let's put a little marker there so we can see where that is exactly. The plus and minus on your number pad, that'll allow you to zoom in. Get an idea of what we're looking at. No, he did not put a... Well, he did put a launcher down, I think. Oh no, he's just walking around with a launcher. Okay. So, let me see. 
All right, perk about being not too far away from where you're uh, rhinoing from is you can still kind of see your building. That'll at least give you a heads up that if there's a, uh, a dart or an enemy darter in your area and they've already found you and marked your building, you'll have a heads up before the jets come and get you to despawn all your stuff and move. So, yeah. Look around. Set selection reset. Incoming sector scan. Oh, we'll clear the there. Clear there. So normally in the heat of the battle, if this is all really hot, uh, you'll have guys down there that'll be calling out, "Hey, I see a tank here," or you know, "I I see parachute there." Of course, start asking them to ping it so you can start marking it and tracking it yourself and sending rounds down. Don't try to send anything that's in the air. Uh, you can't really hit anything in the air with the uh, ATGMs. Wait until they hit the ground, and especially wait until people get in them. That's that's when they're the juiciest. But if you don't have any targets, if you've been doing this and you've basically stopped them from ever wanting to drop any kind of a vehicle in the area, and you can't really find no more statics through sector scans... Incoming sector scan. Select sector. Incoming sector scan. Okay, like okay. Here we got a static weapon. Go ahead and put a mark right next to it. Don't put it on it because it'll block our view, but put it right next to it. Let's go ahead and swivel around. Let's zoom right in. All right, it is about right there. Can't see it too well. If you want, you can switch views to either highlight a little bit more. If it's the daytime, just regular, but since it's getting dark, it's a little bit hard to see. So there we go. Um, if you can get right on it, hold left control and tap T. That'll lock you on there. Enemies incoming. If it moves, of course it's not, but if it moves, it'll track it. It'll stay on there. If you leave the darter and you're on your rhino, it'll still track it. So the reason you want to always control T when you leave your darter is because if you don't, the uh, cursor or the aim here will default to up front center of the drone. So you have to swivel back around to find your target every single time. So always before you leave your drone, control T it somewhere on the ground. Um, so you can jump right back into it and you're right there. Okay, so we have our target. Let's go ahead and left click and turn our laser on. As soon as we're there, we're locked onto our target. We got our laser. Let's go ahead and release UAV controls. That'll bring us back here. So let me change my range, eight kilometers, and there is our laser. Okay, make sure we get ATGMs, everything's loaded, top-down mode, always check to make sure you're in top-down mode. Uh, there's still a little glitch that if you're bouncing between the Rhino and your darter, it'll come out of that top-down mode and you'll just start shooting into the buildings and stuff in front of you. So always make sure that little triangle's up there before you go to shoot. But uh, we got our laser and there's no other lasers on the map to uh, confuse us. But since it's only one, go ahead and tap R and we will lock onto it. Now sometimes, if you're already on it, you can tap T, and it'll tell you what that target is. But not this case, since it's just a static weapon. But it's a vehicle, and it's been identified. Where it says target laser underneath there, it'll say what vehicle you know that you are targeting. But there we go. We got our lock. Um, we see the little white square around the laser. Now every round we send is going to go right towards it. Now it's on the third ring away from me, and I kind of how I average is between the first and the second ring, um, I can get maybe two rounds in the air. To the third ring there where it's at, I can get three to almost four rounds in the air, and then the eight kilometers, that last ring there, you can get almost six rounds into the air before they start hitting. But a static weapon only needs about two rounds. Uh, the ATG is not that powerful, so... Unfortunately, it's going to take a couple of rounds to kill most static weapons. Uh, let's do three. Let's see if we can get three. Now, another little thing. Since we are so close to the building, 
the uh, marker there where I'm hitting and the round travel is going to be a little bit different. If I aim right there, the bullet's going to actually go through the doorway like right through here. So if I aim up here, the bullet's going to go through the doorway here. You want to keep in mind that if you are wedged up against this corner over here shooting out this door and you only got a little sliver to shoot out of that you're not hitting the frame of the building because that'll blow up the building, blow you up, bad stuff. So uh, always try to shoot into the door first unless you're hugging this side. If you try to shoot here, there's a chance you might hit the door frame. So always play it safe. I, I go right here and then near up and then fire. Okay, so the round hit right there and it hit the building. So let's go, let's pick this corner right here. And it just cleared. So that's going to be my spot is right there. That's one round, two, and there's five second intervals. That means every round that you're going to track is going to be five seconds. Let's do four really quick. Four. Okay. Now scroll down all the way to the bottom, hit shift, and do control T to unlock it. Boom. Okay, there's the first one. Now every five seconds, another one's gonna hit. Three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Down. And we're looking is for that in the bottom corner is 10 CP awarded for eliminating an enemy. As soon as you do that, you know you kill them. Now don't turn your laser off just yet. If you turn your laser off and you have rounds in the air, they will just start randomly hitting places and there's a chance that they could hit friendlies so guide in all of your rounds before you turn your laser off and when you're done with that specific target turn your laser off there might be other people uh marking targets for jets or planes or something like that and having your laser just roaming around will mess with them all the time and it's just not cool you know you gotta help your buddies you know we're all here to kill the bad guy so, okay, we got that down. I've seen a guy just spawn right there, but right now we don't care about soft targets. Let's go back to some sector scans. Select sector. Nothing there. Oh yeah, we got a couple of enemy darters. Those are more likely all enemy, so you gotta watch out for that. As soon as you really start nailing targets, those darters will start coming looking for where those rounds are coming from, so just keep that in mind if you start to get a little too trigger happy. You also, if uh, you hear jets or your, uh, your team's calling for jets saying that they're seeing enemy jets, try to watch when you fire. Um, the jets can hear you fire as they fly by. They can see the round leaving, especially at night. It's uh, You're shooting big, huge road flares out of a doorway as far as they're concerned. Okay. Now, another thing you got to worry about, and it's a nasty little thing, but it happens. Spies. Out 4 will get tired of you banging on them and your team banging on them. And they're thinking you're cheating, and they think, oh, hell, it's fair, let's uh, cheat back. Or they'll have some little kid over there that thinks it's going to be funny to come over here and spy, and they'll get into a Discord or something with them. And they'll come over on our side, and they'll start finding where we got our rhinos and our ammo and stuff like that, and they'll start hitting us. Now, if you got someone that spawns in your town, one of a friendly, and he comes all the way over, and he looks at you, get his name keep an eye down here it'll say if he disconnected that means he left your side doesn't mean he left the game just mean he left your side if he looks at you disappears and you see he disconnected he's going back over and he's telling his buddies or if he's in the discord doing it that way um, if he's just looking at you then you get blown up make sure you get his name because then you know that's the one that snitched on you they do do that and kick him the kicks in Arma do still work. Everybody's got to vote. Uh, just double tell them to double tap J, go to the player's name, and then click on it, and it'll have the uh, kick vote or mute, and to not spam the kick vote. It's still kind of glitched out, and if you spam the kick vote, it just resets it. So tell them to just vote once, 
and you can get rid of them pretty easily. Just keep an eye on that. It's a nasty little thing, but it happens quite a bit. Okay, so here we go. We got a vehicle. Go ahead and get on here. Lock on. Turn our laser on. Maybe back out a little bit. Go to release. Hit R. Make sure we're nice and clear. We got our top down on. And let's throw about four rounds. Since that's a fast mover, he's going to be a little bit tricky to hit. Get him out as fast as we can. And that last one, I'm going to scroll down. And now zoom in a little bit. Take a control T off. And now we got to lead him a bit. Ha ha. And there we go. Like I said, make sure you lead your other rounds in safely. But that's how you uh, rhino. Got him off the first round. He didn't stand a chance. Okay, all rounds are out safely. Target's down, and we got an enemy chopper. Oh, he's looking for me. Alright, gotta keep an eye on him. Think he knows about the rhino. Alright, don't fire because he's pretty close to us and they can definitely see the rounds come from this direction. And they have darters in the area, so all he's got to do is tell his buddies the direction he's hearing the shots from and they get one step closer to killing us. So, just kind of wait and help where you can help. like right here. Go ahead and do a lock on it. There's a guy already waiting for it, so let's give him some rounds. By the time these get there, he'll already be in there and uh, trying to drive, but he might not last too long, so do three. Alright, he is still sitting in there, so he's not going to like this. Uh, I always take off the control T so as soon as I kill him I can relocate and take out other targets if I got an extra round well there's a guy sitting right here so why not okay turn the laser off and then let's check uh, nope they're still not looking in my area yet but some of the dots disappeared, so there's a chance they're coming in my direction, so just got to be wary. Okay. Any more vehicles? Oh, we do got a vehicle. Check that. No friendly near it. Oop, wrong one. Release. Okay. Give me two rounds. Oh, let's give me three. I always have one just in case. How he survived, I don't know. Let's see that he doesn't. Just need to. There we go. finish this vehicle off. Still, that is one tough vehicle. Let's get rid of it. don't like having heat signatures on a battlefield.
my own. You gotta account for that. There will be a slight drift on some of your rounds. And your rounds don't like going through trees. The the laser confuses the direction. So if you hit there, your rounds will hit off to the side because you're hitting the top of the tree and the round wants to hit the ground or something like that. So always try to take that account when you're trying to chase things through trees. Keep your laser on the ground as best you can and not in the tree itself for accurate hits. Well, looks like we got ourselves a runner. Let's see if we can tag him. It's difficult. There we go. I think I got him there. Nope, I didn't. There we go. Control teed him. It's very hard. And then a single round is all he needs. That is a bad guy, right? <laughs> oh, that's that's a very bad guy. That's a very dead bad guy. Bye bye bad guy. Alright, control T, release. And then check my button. Still clear. That means swing. sector scan. There we go. Another target. Shift T. Check your map. Oh yeah, that can't be a friendly. Tap T a couple of times. He doesn't show up as friendly. Let's kill him. Turn the laser on. Send four rounds because they uh, well, they do take a bit of a beating. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the control T off so we can lead him. <laughs> okay. Everything looks pretty quiet. Incoming sector scan. Not too happy drone operator there. Still clear there. You'll notice that it'll get to a point where they will wisen up and stop dropping stuff. Get kind of boring, you know, you won't have no target. So now is where you start hunting soft targets. So, sector scans. Ooh, look at all those bad guys right there. Let me see, it's marked that one. There we go. Let's bring this building down. Now, if you left bracket, you can change to a missile view. Unfortunately, that does not kill them. Wait till the rubble clears to find them. Send a couple more rounds. It's just a little bit trickier because the chances of hitting friendlies gets really high. And hitting a friendly means you die and then you get knocked out of your rhino. And you kind of lose control of your darter. Another bad guy over here. Let's make his day really bad. I think two would be good for him. Yeah, he'll like two of them. Oh, he's going to try that. That's not good.
And that's how you hunt soft targets. See, we got another one over here. Oh, he all sneaky. Hey, sneaky, sneaky. Well, so am I. Yeah, he gets two. Two is all he needs. Any more before I turn this off? Remember, always track in all your rounds. Alright, got some. That's not friendly. Alright, here's another way to be mean. Oh yeah, see, they're all running. They're all like, hey, this is my vehicle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just get in there. Make that just a fatter target for me. Bye bye. So that's how you be a pain in the butt. So there's not much point picking on these guys because no one's taking the flag back and just hitting them gives your position away because they're close enough they should be able to hear the directions of the round. So we're not going to give them too much crap. Unfortunately, we lost that town and not much people are trying to take it back. Now let me see if they're at least putting up static Select weapons sector. I can take care of. Incoming sector stand. Uh, if you put your mouse on anything and hit the delete key, you can delete it. Your marker, somebody else's markers. Okay, let's clear up some of these statics for them at least. Zoom them all the way in. There we go. That picks it out a little better. Uh, probably can't get three rounds in there, but we can try. Yeah, three rounds is pushing it. That's all right. Move over a little bit. The angle's not right. There we go. 10 CP awarded for elim eliminating an enemy, even though it's a stationary target. They call it an enemy. And gotcha. There we go. Any more bad guys? Yep, that's another one right there. R, make sure top down still on. Throw two rounds. And let's get them behind that rock. Now, the reason I mentioned uh, static weapons is one of the things that you're going to want to concentrate on along with the heavy vehicles is because static weapons will prevent your team members from capturing a town. And they're usually OP to get anywhere near for them so you can take them out without hurting yourself and saving them. So as soon as you got guys trying to take a town make sure you do a sector scan and start hitting all of the uh, static weapons. Let your team know that there are static weapons in that area. Okay, another thing if you haven't noticed or if you've noticed people complaining about it, when you are looking through an AR darter, right, and you shift T something and you ping it, 
No one, for some reason, no one sees that but you. I think that's just another way to nerf the dart or something, but yeah, no one sees that but you. Even if you switch over to the map and you're still looking through the darter and you ping something, you know, you shift T, let me, that was wrong, and then you shift T something, only you is seeing that. You have to completely exit the darter to be able to ping something. So uh, don't get mad if someone can't see your pings. They literally cannot see your pings. Okay, just keep selecting and clearing these things out. You have to just take that whole solar panel with us. Sector scan terminated. There we go. Okay. 10 CP awarded for eliminating enemy. So that means we got it. Do another sector scan for the next one. Sector. I think there was one more. Incoming sector scan. And then our buddies can cap. Yep. One more. And it's even got a person on it. How nice of him. He's going to need three because not just him, but the weapon's going to need a couple of rounds. There we go. He's dead. Now let's get his static weapon. Okay, static weapon is down. I'll let that last round come in before we turn our laser off. Just because we got friendlies in here somewhere. Oh, oh, oh you sneaky, sneaky too, huh? Okay, okay. Oh, he's not gonna like this. He he thinks he's so safe. Oop, and another one caught him pretty good. And now, ooh, ooh, oh, hit the building frame there. Got to be careful about that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, come on. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. You're so dead. You're so dead. And blam. That's a human. He's acting like a human. Yeah, right. Come here. Come here. You know you want it. You know you want it. You know you want it. Your little friend here wants it too, yeah. Oh, and there's a sniper right there, huh? Yep, that's a sniper. You can kill him too. <clears throat> it's like a special kind of mean hunting people down like this. Uh, he's kind of safe right there. For now. Uh, he is not safe no more. Yep, he is not safe at all. Hoo hoo hoo. <laughs> I stole that kill from him. <laughs> that is funny. Let me see what we got here. Statics, everything's gone. So you got caught, right? You got blown up, you got a little trigger happy, jets flying by, they saw you, they killed you. Now your drone is still up in the air. 
still doing what it was doing last. So if you had a laser, it's still got a laser on the field that's going to drive you nuts. Don't just discard it. It's still in place. You don't want to waste time driving another one all over there. So the best thing to do is when you spawn back at your base, first thing when you do is access your I menu, go to gear, and always do your last loadout. That will give you your terminal to access your drone. You should be able to just log right back into it, right where you were, and just go from there. Sector seized. Okay, so that's how I run a Rhino. I hope that helped, and thank you for watching. See you on the battlefield.